Good morning, guys. So today, it's going to be a rainy day, so they tell us. But we're going to be working anyway. And the reason being is because we're going to work on a project inside. We're going to be doing a basement floor and a garage floor for a custom home. I got my lunch today. And we're going to be doing the preparations today because it's going to be a two-step process. We're going to be doing radiant heat in this basement. So we'll discuss the processes that you have to go through for the radiant heat. And, and then how you go about pouring it because obviously you're going to have all the pipes that are now going to be on the ground. So we'll discuss the process of it. And we have to give them a price to do slabs for the front porch and the back porch. So we're going to give them a price on all that. I mean, I'm sure we're going to wind up doing it, but we're going to have to give them a number for that as well today. So we're just getting started. And... They said we were supposed to get a lot of rain, close to three inches of rain, but we didn't get the rain last night, and so far it's not raining this morning, so I'm sure we're going to get it, but so far so good. And the other thing today is we're going to be renting the T-140, and the reason we're renting the T-140 is is because if we do get the, I was nervous if we got the rain and it got muddy, that the S185 wouldn't be able to work. So let's get to the job, check it out. Okay, so we're in the basement. Here's Leo. Huh? Here's Leo, we're in the basement. Oh. Here's Leo. So Leo, whoever says the cement man's job is easy is lying, right? Mike, 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 Mike! Buried the trap, Come so on, we're gonna have to dig it out. Here's Carlos. So, with the radiant heat, when you put down the insulation board, you have to go to the top of the pipes. So, as you can see, the pipes are higher than the footing because the storm, the sewer was too high in the street, they couldn't make pitch. So we have the height set on the laser. And this is going to tell us our stone height. So we're going to wind up burying the footing. So you see this is going to be... So that's going to be the top of the stone. Leo's digging out the trap. Let's see what Leo did. Uh, you gotta go down all the way to underneath the pipe. They cemented it? Okay. I um, mean, ice. Oh, okay, so we gotta break that ice out. We gotta get underneath the pipe so we can put the box all the way to the bottom. Yeah, there's a lot of water under here, so. That's why they had to run the French drain system the way they did. So yeah, gonna have to dig that out to build the box. Uh, dig it out all the way to here where you have it. This is good. This is all good. What you have dug out is good. Just got to go deeper. Wow. Okay. Another six inches. Go around and I check my height. 
This shelf is for the concrete to sit on. So all of this is going to be spanned with rebar. Insulation board will be okay. So once you have your stone graded out, ready to go, it's time to go to work on prepping for the radiant heat. So the first thing you're gonna do is put down a vapor barrier on top of your stone. Four mil or six mil plastic will do. Whether or not you have water in the basement, you should always put a vapor barrier, it keeps the moisture out of the basement. So that is step one. Next step is you get your insulation board. You're going to put it down with the foil backing. Uh, some guys say you could use regular insulation. Um, I was always told by the plumbers to use the styrofoam with the foil backing. Again, preference. I don't know if there are any advantages or disadvantages to either one. I'm just doing what I'm told to do by the plumbers in my area. Next thing is you throw down the wire mesh mats. Uh, the mesh mats do not have to overlap, but they do have to be next to each other and tied together. Uh, I like to tie them together for the simple fact that once the concrete is being poured, they won't shift and move, especially once the tubes are tied to them. You don't want any movement in that. Those tubes are fragile, they break easily. So you want to take the extra time to do that and get that 100% done. Then the plumber is going to come in and tie his tubes to your wire mesh mats. Then you're going to be ready to pour concrete once he's all done with that. When you pour the concrete, Always hire a pump. Don't try to pour it with chutes or right off the truck. Uh, the velocity of the concrete hitting the ground hard, that could damage the tubes. And if you get any concrete to clog those pipes, it's going to be a disaster to chop out the slab and try to find the problem. You're way better off pumping it. This way the cement touches the ground nice and easy. You do have to take precautions with a line pump. You'll see in the photos what we did to keep the pipe safe. Hey guys! Say hi! Okay guys, no more video for today. Okay guys, I know it's a little dark. But you can see we're in the garage area. So they got all the tubing done for the radiant heat. Maybe this will help with the phone a little bit. So you see we got the rebar running underneath the wire. And we got that foil insulation underneath. I actually got a piece of it over here I could show you. So whenever you do radiant heat, this is the material that you're going to use. So I think it comes in 5 8 It might come in half inch. This is half inch. So this is half inch. It's styrofoam on this side and it's got the aluminum backing on this side. Aluminum, well it's not aluminum foil, but what this foil ends up doing is they end up, see how it's it's glued to the styrofoam and what this does is when the heat comes through the radiant heat pipe this reflects the heat to keep it going up into the concrete slab because the heat is going to have a long way to go uh, through the concrete so we're going to have about three inches of concrete above these pipes I'd say these pipes are about an inch thick I'd say and I would say if you measured from the insulation board, it would be about three inches, maybe three and a half inches higher. 
maybe we'll do four I'll just see how the height works out but anyway this is the material so this is the reason why you got to get it perfectly flat with the stone because you see how easy it breaks see virtually just will break just by putting your hand on it so you've got to be super careful with this material you got to get it to um, you got to get it to the point where that stone is basically flat because when you start walking on it you're going to have a problem if the stone's not flat if it's wavy like this you step on it you're gonna break it right away all right guys so here is the end product we ended up pumping this with the line pump so as you can see it came out really nice really sharp you see, sometimes you have an issue pouring a floor like this. When you have to pour it through a pump, it has to be a little wetter. And with the plastic and the insulation underneath it, it doesn't let the water go anywhere. So it becomes a little bit of a pain to get it finished real nice. But as you can see, we took the time and got it done right. Over there in that corner is where the sump pump pit is. And they have to raise that pit. So that's why I left it boxed out. And that box right there is for the water in the sewer, for the trap. And this is for the shower that goes up. Because there's a bathroom down here. So that's that. I thought it was in a million. Oh, we're down to a thousand. We're getting better. Maybe I could start to afford it soon. When you afford it, then you <laughs> you recover, guys. Not right now. He's a very expensive actor. And remember, no checks again. <laughs> oh, but I need to get it from the big account. <laughs> 